Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we're going to take a look at a couple of knives from the company Kubi Knives. First and foremost, before we get started, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Kubi who have provided these products for review. Now recently, I've been carrying these Kubi KU212s. I have a few of them here. I've taken a look at them in the past and I have greatly enjoyed these knives. Now I haven't used the black one all too much. However, I can tell you that I have used both the green with satin finish and the tan with this black finish quite a bit. I have used the green extensively. I mean, just over and over and over again, just naturally gravitating towards this. I have loved the overall utility capability, the size, the fit, the finish. The overall quality has been excellent. And so talking with the people at Kubi, I kind of wanted to take a look at another one of their blades and they offered to send me one of their newest blades. However, in this video, we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison. So for this comparison, we're going to take a look at the KU176 and the KU179. Now this is a case of similar yet different, like pretty much kind of the same, but kind of not. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about soon. So if you're interested in seeing just a little bit more about what I'm talking about, do me a favor, stay tuned. So as I mentioned, the people at Kubi Knives wanted to send me one of their newest blades to review. So here I have the KU176. But if you've been watching my channel, you probably realize I do prefer to do a reasonably comprehensive video and comprehensive review. I like to take a topic and kind of run with it. So if you look at what Kubi Knives does, oftentimes they'll have their kind of budget level sort of entry level knives and then they also have very similar models that are a step up. They have upgrades, upgraded handle materials, upgraded steels and different types of factors like that. So that's where the KU-179 comes into play. Now the KU-179 has been around for a little while, the K-176 being a newer knife to Kubi. So at this point, we're gonna take a look at both of these so you see exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the different lineups. So again, going back to more of the sort of standard model here, the KU176. So you'll see here that the boxes are a little bit different, the actual packaging and the size of the packaging. Now at this point, I have not yet opened these up. So I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna get into. So as I get into this here, Looking at the KU176, you will see that this is in orange G10. So unlike the other knives I've already had a chance to take a look at, at this point we've seen the G10 in green, tan, and black. This one here is in the orange. So here the KU176, nicely packaged up. You'll see it's here in this little bit of a plastic wrapper, keeps it protected and popping it out. Now I like to see this little pack of silica gel. Now this knife is in D2 tool steel, which shouldn't have too much of a problem with moisture, but I have seen a couple of Kubi knives in the past that had a little bit of a moisture damage due to storage. So the fact that they're packaging these up and they're throwing a little bit of silica gel in there definitely shows that they are concerned with the quality coming right out of the box. But here, the KU176. Now, this is considered to be, according to this, FUK176-1. Getting into it, here you'll see, again, nice ergonomic handle. Actually reasonably large when I grab this in my hands, feels great in the hands. Has this nice sort of little area where your thumb just indexes nicely on top. 
has a couple little cutouts for your fingers that feels comfortable and this is d2 tool steel which i greatly like so this particular knife here you will see in this polished finish has a liner lock on the bottom with good positive lockup right where you want it pretty much at roughly the 30 40 percent mark seems to be fairly smooth so right off the get-go very smooth action that feels nice I like the weight of the blade, I like the size, and it's definitely comfortable in the hands. So now at this point, just for the comparison's sake, let's take a look at this KU-179. So this KU-179 is called the Eris. Now again, this model has been around for a little while now, but this, you will see, is a great opportunity to compare this with the KU-176. And if you were asking yourself, well, why is that box so much larger? It's because now we are stepping into that sort of mid-tier knife from Kubi, which really steps it up. I have to say, for this to come in this awesome sort of multi-cam pouch is definitely sweet. Personally, I have not yet owned sort of like a knife pouch, so to get one here is definitely cool, and the fact that it looks awesome, I greatly enjoy that. But now, opening this pouch and revealing the knife. Well, not quite yet, interesting. So, little sort of cleaning cloth here. It's actually an authenticity card, so certificate of authenticity. Pulling out that KU. 179 Eris. Taking a look here, so might as well use the 176 to slice this open. Simple. And bam. Again, this is nicely packaged. A little silica gel to protect it. And taking a look here, as I mentioned, just a little bit upgraded. So, nicely laid out, you'll see, with carbon fiber. Beautiful, nicely done. We have a titanium pocket clip. Nice titanium colored spacer. And the blade. D2 tool steel, yet now, stone wash finish. That is just gorgeous. So, remember when I said... We're going to take a look at two knives that are basically the same yet different. Well, that's why. So we have two blades here that are almost exactly the same, yet the finishes are a little bit different. The quality, just a little bit different. Now, it's not to say that the quality is not there with the 176. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying the finishes, the overall construction is just a little bit different. The material's a little bit different. So, same, but different. Now getting into a little more detail here with the 179 Eris, again, as I mentioned, carbon fiber, and then you'll see the difference here. You got that back spacer, whereas on the 176, you actually have standoffs. So that's what you'll see when you get into these Kubi knives and you get into the slightly different lineups. They have just a slightly different finish, and in different cases, a little bit different hardware sometimes, even the pocket clip different shape, different material. So generally speaking, both very nice. However, depending on what you're looking for, you can go either way. So now giving you a complete rundown of this KU-176. First and foremost, as I mentioned, this is currently in the orange G10, but you can also get this in green, coyote tan, or black. So I opted for the orange. I think this would make a beautiful sort of companion knife. Excellent for the wilderness or backpacking application. Nice and lightweight, good practical design, and is a nice companion to a larger blade. So I opted for this in the color orange. Now this weighs in at a reported 89 grams. This has a blade height of 0.9 inches, blade length of 3.5 inches, and a blade thickness of 3.5 millimeters. The closed length, as we close this up here, is 4.6 inches and then has a total overall length of 8.1. Again, the handle material being G10. And now this has no back spacer, but rather standoffs. This is D2 tool steel, which actually has a vacuum treated heat treat. And I have to be honest, I'm not very familiar with that, but Kubi reports this to be a vacuum heat treatment. This has a satin finish, with a hardness of 59 to 61. Now this clip is a 420 
J2 stainless steel. Again, I'm reasonably familiar with 420, but not 420 J2. I'm not sure exactly what that designation means, but they do report this to be a 420 J2 stainless steel. Now this blade style is very cool. I think it has an overall excellent utility sort of shape and I like the sort of false swedge on the top. I think it's just a stylish blade, has a nice overall tip, sort of a drop point design, but has that little up sweep to it. So it's kind of in between different grinds, very interesting. So Kubi calls this more of a Western and flat grind. So not exactly sure what they mean by the Western grind, but that definitely to me has a great overall utilitarian shape. Now it's a tip up carry and basically right handed. So your lefties are gonna struggle just a little bit. And if you like a tip down carry, this would not be the knife for you. Now, personally, I'm a righty and I also basically, for the most part, really only like tip up carry. Now I won't discriminate against a blade that's tip down, but I definitely prefer my tip up. So to have this knife here, being a right-handed tip up carry works very well for me. Now it is a flipper design and it has ceramic ball bearings. And that's what I've liked about the Kubi knives. Very nice deployment, just smooth and comfortable and feels good in the hand. Nice, quick, snappy deployment with those ceramic ball bearings. And just one final last little detail, the rest of the hardware being a 416 stainless steel. And so now for the KU179 Eris, Again, this is 8.1 inches overall length. You have your 3.5 inch blade length, 3.5 millimeter or 0.14 inch blade thickness, blade width of 24 millimeters. Now your handle length and folded length here is 4.6 inches, very nice and pocketable size. A net weight here of 95 grams, so reported just a little bit heavier than that KU176. Now again, with your ball bearings, the D2 tool steel, the Rockwell hardness of 59 to 61, and you'll notice here that stone wash finish, which is just beautifully done. Now this pocket clip is titanium, so 6AL4V titanium pocket clip has an anodizing to it, so just that kind of shiny, silvery, gray looking anodization, nicely done. Liner lock on the inside, and you'll notice if you look carefully on the inside that this does have stainless liners. So not just a carbon fiber body, but the stainless liners on the inside. So good robust knife at the same time. It is reasonably lightweight, but just a little bit heavier than that KU176. There's a little bit of skeletonization that could have been done on the inside of here to save a little bit of weight. It does not appear as though that there is any, just a solid stainless liner on the inside of the handle. So if you've been watching my channel, if you've been keeping an eye on my TFK T17 build that I personally very much like D2 tool steel with a stone wash finish. That's kind of my jam. So when I saw this KU179 with D2 tool steel and a stone wash finish, I was like, hey man, I definitely appreciate that. So this look and feel to me is something that is very desirable. I think it looks amazing. I very much like it. But if you're not into the stone wash finish, they do also have a satin finish version. And if you like the satin finish version, basically you end up with a blue anodized clip. Very similar to what you're seeing in color on this KU212 in the black version with that kind of blue anodized look on the clip, you can also get that for this KU179. Now, personally, I do prefer the kind of muted look on the blade. I like it being a little more subdued. I think it's a beautiful overall presentation. I like having the backspacer kind of a little bit more, I would say, than the standoffs. Now, I have to say, I do very much like with standoffs the fact that it's very easy to clean the inside of the knife. You can get Q-tips in there, cotton swabs, something like that. Very easy to clean it. Now, that's not really a downfall here, I would say, of the 179. Again, also very easy to clean, a very open body, not a big deal. But 
at this point it's really up to you so what i think is a great option is if you do want to upgrade really you're talking about ballpark at the time of this video the 30 dollar price point for this ku176 and the $50 price point for the KU-179, not only are you getting the upgraded materials, but you're actually also getting this nicely padded case. So to actually get the additional utility purpose you get with this case, it can hold two knives nicely. It actually is offset so the handles won't rub. I like the overall shape and size and the construction. I like the color. So I feel like you get a lot of value out of this KU-179. I also get a ton of value out of the 176. It's just what is your preference. So for me, where I've been carrying these 212s at length and very much enjoying them, I cannot wait to get to work with both this 176 and 179. Now both the KU-176 and 179 just have some similarities to a couple other knives that you may be familiar with. One of them to me is the Benchmade 940. Now I'm not saying that this knife is exactly like a Benchmade 940. That's not at all what I'm really trying to say. But what I mean is there's some similarities in the overall blade shape. It just kind of catches my attention, shows me that it's in a similar size range, similar shape, overall blade profile in a way. But another knife that it really kind of resembles in my mind is this Benchmade Contigo 810. Now, taking a look at it here, obviously the Contigo 810 is significantly larger. However, it's just the actual sort of, I would say, general characteristics that I like about this 810 that catch my attention with this Kubi lineup. So, for example, the shape of the handle. Now, again, not exactly the same. Obviously, the Kubi knives are much smaller, but it's those sort of characteristics. For example, with the Benchmade 810, that nice indexing and the fact that you end up with that designated sort of finger choil area and then the additional finger choil area in the back of the knife. Good indexing right here on the top of the handle. Well, that's kind of similar here to the KU176 and 179. Again, you get that finger choil, that secondary area where your fingers just nicely index and that sort of indexing thumb ramp right on the top. So again, not that this is exactly the same as the Benchmades, I just think that there's similar desirable characteristics that just remind me of other knives that I greatly like. And that's just a compliment to the nice quality design and ergonomic feel that you get with these Kubi knives. So now that I've had a chance to get these out of the box and take a look at them, I'm definitely excited to put these to good use. I think these are nice quality knives, definitely well made. I like the overall general construction of both of these, so nice and comfortable for me. I like the fact personally that they are a tip up carry, that's definitely a bonus. You know, it's tough for the lefties and I kind of feel for you, but at the same time, you know, I'm personally happy with these. I think they're a good quality option. And if you're looking for something at a very nice price point, these are definitely worth checking out. I've been very happy with Kubi knives in general. I've had a little bit of a hard time with some of the comments and the likes and dislikes. I'm kind of surprised. Maybe it's because of Chinese manufacturing, but bottom line is these are definitely nice. There's other Chinese knife manufacturers out there and a lot of them are doing a great job. I've had an excellent ownership opportunity with these KU 212s. Very enjoyable. The Kubi KU 153 Ti, also known as the Anteater, is another great example of where they've taken sort of their standard model and then upgraded it to better materials with titanium handle scales, titanium clips, and S35VN steel, which is really awesome. So that's what I kind of like. Kubi's going in the right direction. They have that good mix between your budget blades with also very nice materials. G10 and D2, you can't really go wrong. Nice overall finishes and an excellent overall package. 
So again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Kubi who have provided these products for a review. I'm going to continue to move forward with these, give them an overall test, try out their overall capability and quality in a number of different uses. But for now, I think this will pretty much wrap up this video. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.